Good morning and welcome to New Hope this morning. Those of you that are here and guests this morning, um, we have my mom with us, so I'm so happy she's with us this morning. And those of you that have joined us by internet, welcome to New Hope. If you recall, I'm doing a three-part series and um, it's a series that is not just for the people here at New Hope, but for anyone who calls himself a Christian, anyone who's a believer and that believes that Jesus is indeed the Son of God and has made him Lord and Savior of their life. This is for everyone who believes that. So part one, if you recall, was the rejected sinner. It's not when God rejects a person who has accepted him and has stumbled and fallen. It's for the believers who, the seasoned Christians, who don't help pick that brother or sister back up again. They treat him as a rejected sinner. And so we're reminded by God that we're not supposed to do that. We're supposed to walk in love towards those who have accepted him and to help lift them back up again. We're supposed to walk towards love towards everyone, but especially towards someone who has accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Part two is about sowing seed and yielding a harvest. We spoke about um, sharing the seed, which is the gospel, which is the word of God. And sowing seeds along the path, along rocky ground, along, among thorns, and some seeds that fell on good ground. We also heard about sowing seeds of discord. And that's when believers just want to start causing issues amongst other believers instead of working together and coming together for the same purpose. We were all supposed to be in the same purpose, the same thoughts and the same mind as Christ. And if you're a believer, regardless of the denomination, we all should believe and see people the way Jesus sees people, that he died for every person that would accept him as Lord and Savior. He died for everyone. It doesn't matter of their race. It doesn't matter of their nationality. It doesn't matter what church they walk into. If they've accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior, they are indeed a believer. And so that was the, the heart of the second part. If you haven't taken time to listen to part one or part two, I want to encourage you to please do so. As we finish up this series, it's called Don't Lose the Harvest, The Hour to Reap. Father, right now we just ask that you would anoint your word. We ask, Father, that your words would be spoken this morning, that you would have us have ears to hear and hearts to be receptive to what your Holy Spirit would say to your church this morning. We thank you, Father. We praise you and give you glory. So we begin in Titus 2, starting with verse 11. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age while we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. Now, I have to tell you, before I got my credentials, I was studying a lot and going to work and spending uh, just around the clock, burning the candle at both ends, you might want to say. And this one night I had gone, we had gone to bed and I was completely exhausted. And once my head hit that pillow, I was out. I was out. Nothing could wake me. Except for, all of a sudden, I started hearing trumpets. And I could hear the trumpets in my head. And I battled trying to open up my eyes. Because in my mind, I'm saying to myself, those are trumpets. Jesus is coming back. And my heart started to stir inside of me. And as I fought to get my eyes opened, I was in my room and it was pitch black and I can hear the trumpets even louder. And my heart was pounding so hard. It was about ready to come out of my chest. And yet I couldn't see anything. And I started to panic on the inside. And I said, Lord, I hear the trumpets. I was saying this in my mind. I hear the trumpets, but I don't see you. Why don't I see you? And in haste, I screamed out, Harry, Harry, can you hear that? And he said, hear what? And I said, the trumpets, can you hear the trumpets? And he said, yes, I hear the trumpets. And I started yelling, Jesus is coming back, Harry. Jesus is coming back. And I grabbed his hand and he started laughing. And I was upset and I'm saying, why are you laughing? And all of a sudden, the TV screen was on. 
And he said, I'm watching a show. <laughs> and he said to me, it's called Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Well, I'm not a Trekkie by any means. And honestly, the room was pitch black. And at the time that the trumpets were going, it was outer space. So that's why I didn't see the TV on. But all I heard were the trumpets. And he's laughing. And I stumbled out of bed and I went into the bathroom. And he kept laughing. And I said, what is so funny? Because I didn't see any humor in any of it. And he goes, you're not going to believe the title of this series. And I said, what is it? And he goes, it's Rapture. <laughs> and I still didn't see anything funny with it, but I stumbled back into bed. <laughs> but he thought it was funny. But I have to tell you, it was at that moment I realized that we aren't speaking much about Jesus coming back anymore. It's been my experience that I don't hear believers I noticed that I wasn't even doing it. So that's a problem. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 through 17. For the Lord himself would descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Now we as believers, we know that this is indeed our blessed hope. It doesn't matter if we are alive or if we have gone to sleep in Jesus. If we are a believer, his return, first of all, is imminent. We know that it's going to happen and we know that it can happen at any moment. Okay, we know that it can happen at any moment. So we can have peace in our hearts and our minds, whether we're alive or whether we pass from this world and fall asleep in Jesus. We know that he is our blessed hope. And one day he's going to come back and he's going to come back for his people. And we will indeed meet him in the air. You see, soon after I realized that, that it was been in my experience that it wasn't being talked about anymore, I shared it with a very good friend of mine. And um, she goes to a different church. And that's okay because, again, we said it's all about believing in Jesus, right? So I told her, I said, you know, I don't hear people talking about Jesus anymore and coming back. And she said to me, I'll be honest with you, since I've been in church, I haven't heard it even preached. And my heart sunk. But it wasn't because she didn't hear it at the pulpit, although that was disturbing. What upset me is that all the time that I had been friends with her, I never shared it with her. And that was a conviction that really nailed me because as a believer, we have a responsibility to share Jesus with others and to tell them he is indeed coming back. And it is indeed a matter of life and death. If we can get that understanding deep in our souls, we'd be telling everybody about Jesus in hopes that they would accept him. I want to talk about our family day that we had. First of all, I thank all of you who participated. Every one of you that came out and helped us make such a difference. Marty with the t-shirts. God bless you for what you did. Helping us with those shirts. That was a blessing. A blessing that you'll never probably fully get the full joy on the inside to understand exactly what it meant to this church to do that for us. But all of you who came, even Dwayne helping us with the tents outside and in the hot hot weather and Jean, all the work that you've done and all the rest of you who have prayed and were there for us. Thank you so much. We sent invitations. We sent invitations to the school, 625 to be exact. That was a lot of invitations. We announced it in the Hudson Post Gazette. Thank you, Chris, for helping me get connected that way. We absolutely appreciated the Hudson Post Gazette putting it in the paper. We stood outside the market house and made connections personally with people on a Sunday afternoon. We had donations from different sponsors. We prayed. Some people prayed. Some people fasted. Some people did both. Whatever talent that God gave you that you blessed us with and helped us with, thank you from the bottom of my heart. That is the heart and the passion of Jesus, that the church come together and be the church. We even had another church come alongside of us, Abundant Life. So thank you, Abundant Life, for being there for us. 
But I have to tell you, after the event, I was a little bit distraught. I said, Lord, everything we did, I would have expected the grounds to just be packed, packed to the max. And Pastor Phyllis and I talked about it. She even mentioned it last week. And I was really, really bummed about it to the point where the Holy Spirit started speaking to my heart and saying, whoa, this isn't about your vision, Cindy. It's about mine. And you see, as I went through the list of everything that we did, we did everything we can humanly possibly do. But we did what the Lord called us to do. So we need to be happy about that. And I have to tell you, the connections we made were a blessing. I was thrilled with the connections that we did make. And they got actually more personalized, which was nice because we had that opportunity to talk to more people. So that was exciting in itself. But the truth of the matter is that we will never know the seeds that we planted that afternoon, whether it be the invitations that we sent home. There were a lot of people at the market that said, you know what, we're not going to be able to make it. But we don't know what seeds we planted at the market that afternoon. We have no idea. Only the Lord knows what seeds were planted. All we need to do now is hope and wait and expectation to see how God grows those seeds. You see, there's a possibility that some may still walk through these doors and then we're going to help continue to water those seeds that we've planted. But it's also a possibility that God's going to use other believers to come along their path. And we have to trust God that his plan, his purpose will come to pass because the gates of hell can't stop his plan and his purpose. And I have to tell you, as I was preparing this message, the gates of hell were really trying to stop me. Even through this morning trying to stop me bringing this message. God is pleased with what we're doing here at New Hope. It's his vision. It is his plan and his purpose. We need to keep focused with that. Matthew 24, starting with verse 32. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as that branch becomes tender and puts out its leaves, you know that summer is near so also when you see all these things, you know that he is near at the very gates. So you see, when we look at the, the craziness that's going on in our world, we shouldn't be surprised. We shouldn't be surprised. Jesus warned his disciples that it's going to get bad. That there's going to be rumors of wars. That we should not be distraught over that. These things need to come to pass. And that we need to understand that it's a signal for us to see that his return is getting closer and closer. So there should be an excitement within us waiting for that expectation. We should be looking for Jesus to come back. Matthew 24, starting with 36. But concerning that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father only. You see, Jesus doesn't even know when he's coming back. So when you hear false prophets... Sitting there telling you it's going to happen this day or that day, walk away from it. Because they don't know. If Jesus himself doesn't know, no man here on earth knows that day nor the hour. So we need to be guarded on the false prophets that we hear. We need to know the scriptures. We need to understand what God's word is saying to us. We all have a mind. God has given each one of us a mind to read the scriptures and understand them for ourselves. For ourselves. And that's our responsibility to understand the scriptures. The Holy Spirit is able to reveal truth as we read. He is able to pour his truth into us so that we can grab a hold of what his Holy Spirit would have us to understand. Verse 37, for as were the days of Noah, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day when Noah entered the ark and they were unaware until the flood came and swept them all away. What happened? They ignored the warning signs. Noah tried to tell them he's building the ark and they, they ignored him. They kept doing their life and just enjoying life in the world because they weren't concerned about the things of God. And when that happened, the floods came and they were no longer. Only Noah and his family were saved on that ark. They ignored the warning. Verse 39 continues. So will be the coming of the son of man. Then two men will be in the field. One will be taken and one left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken 
and one left. Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know what day your Lord is coming. They're talking staying awake spiritually. If we think that it's going to be time before he comes back and we get laxed and we live in the worldly ways, our eyes are not on Jesus coming back. We stop talking about him. We stop telling people that he's coming back because we're too involved with the worldly life that we're living. And that's not a good place to be. We need to ask God for discernment to show us discernment in what we're seeing in this world today. If our hearts are not stirred by some of the stuff we're seeing, something's wrong. Our hearts should be so stirred that there's a stirring inside to reach lost souls. Verse 43, but know this, that if the master of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake. It would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready for the son of man is coming at an hour. You do not expect that night. I heard the trumpets. I crawled back into bed and Harry was still laughing and my heart was still going 50 miles an hour. And I said to him, you know what, Harry, when it happens, I'm not going to have a chance to grab your hand. And that's all I said. And I went to bed. <laughs> I did. I went to bed. I won't have a chance to grab your hand. And that's true with everybody else. We are not going to have a chance when we hear the trumpets to stop and go tell somebody it's going to be too late. If we're looking for him to come in the clouds, we're going to be gone. And it's going to be too late to share the gospel with those we love. So now's the hour. Now's the hour to reach those that we love. 1 Thessalonians 5, 1 through 11. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you are not in darkness, brothers, for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light, children of the day. We are not of the night or of the darkness. So then let us not sleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. Again, this is talking spiritually. When we see other people doing things, it looks like it's fun, but we know biblically it's saying it's wrong. Because, you know, even scripture says sin is fun. For a season. But there's also. Reaping time. Of that sin. And so many people are distraught in life today. Because of the choices that they made yesterday. Are affecting them today. And they can't get out of the vicious cycle they're in. Because they're too caught up with the worldly ways. And they just need to turn their eyes to Jesus. And let him bring them out of it and bring them on the right path. It doesn't mean that they won't feel the effects of their choices. We all make choices and we all live with the choices we make, whether they're good, whether they're bad. That's just, that's just reality for all of us. And we can't get away from it. We don't want many times we want to blame God. It's not God. He's given us his, his word here for us to understand. He tells us what's good, what's evil. The world has, has tainted that we now call what is evil good and we call what is good evil because many times people don't want to hear the word of God we've heard pastor Phyllis preach it where the word of God is offensive to people why because it brings people under conviction they get condemnation and conviction mixed up condemnation is from the enemy the enemy wants to condemn us. He wants us constantly in turmoil. He wants us to constantly feel guilty about our lives. Jesus convicts our hearts with his Holy Spirit saying, whoa, 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 city, that's not right. Don't do that. And it's up to us to heed to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Now, that doesn't mean that we're always listening because none of us are perfect. But God sees your heart and sees your desire to serve him. And that's where our focus has to be, making sure that our heart is right with the Holy Spirit. 
Let's continue. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet of the hope of salvation. For God has not dis, uh, destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up, just as you are doing. You see, it's all about Jesus being on that cross, dying that horrific death for the redemption of all of our sins. He had each one of us in mind that day on the cross. He could have called 10,000 angels and stopped it that day. He went to the cross willingly for each and every one of us here today and everyone watching by the internet. His blood washes our sins away, nothing else. It's by the blood of the lamb, which is Jesus. He is the final sacrifice that if we would accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we have a place in heaven one day, whether we are alive here on earth and get caught up in, in the clouds or whether we have already fallen asleep. There should be no fear of death because if we're a believer, we should know that we're going with him one day. And so we should have peace of mind that one day we will be living with him in eternity. And hopefully our loved ones will be with us and that we will be all together. That is our blessed hope as Christians. And again, I'm not talking denominations. It's talking Christians. Okay. Revelation 14, starting with verse 12. Here is a call for the endurance of the saints. If you're a believer, you're a saint. You're a saint already if you are a believer. Those who keep the commandments of God and their faith in Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, write this. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Blessed indeed, says the spirit, that they may rest from their labors for their deeds follow them. Then I looked and behold a white cloud and seated on the cloud one like the son of man with a golden crown on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. And another angel came out of the temple calling with a loud voice to him who sat on the cloud, put in your sickle and reap for the hour to reap has come for the harvest of the earth is fully ripe. So he who sat on the cloud swung his sickle across the earth and the earth was reaped. Now that's talking about him gathering his people. He's coming back for his people. Then another angel came out of the temple in heaven and he too had a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar and the angel who has authority over the fire. And he called with a loud voice to the one who had the sharp sickle. Put in your sickle and gather the clusters from the vine of the earth, for its grapes are ripe. So the angel swung his sickle across the earth and gathered the grape harvest of the earth and threw it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. And the winepress was trodden outside the city and blood flowed from the winepress as high as a horse's bridle for 1600 st stadia. Now I'm going to tell you, I, I, Look this word up, stadia, because it's sort of, you know, got my attention. And as close of a description I can get, it's a Roman or a Greek measurement. I believe it comes from the Latin, the words, but it's approximately 606 feet, almost 607. And so it's per stadia. And I want to say it's thousands of, of feet high. And that's what they're talking about here. That blood is going to flow wide. I'm sorry, it's long. I said that backwards, so it's going to be long. I want to say it's almost like 200, almost 200 miles, maybe 184 miles if I, the length, right? So it's like 184 miles is what I had, had researched. But Jesus is coming back. And here's the hard, hard, cold facts that not everybody's going to be captured up into heaven. Not everybody's going to make it to heaven. It doesn't matter if somebody's a good person. That's not how it works. That's not what the scriptures tell us. It doesn't matter if somebody's a good person. They have to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. 
They have to be wanting to serve Jesus with their heart. Now, again, none of us are perfect. And God works with each one of us and continually, even believers who have se or seasoned Christians should be experiencing the Holy Spirit drawing us even closer and closer on a daily basis, getting rid of the stuff that doesn't please him because none of us are perfect. So as even a new believer versus an older believer, we all have to keep our eyes on Jesus. This weekend, I went to go home for family reunions and Many of you, I've asked you to pray for my cousin, Mike. He has ALS, he's battling ALS. And we went to go visit him first and his, his beautiful wife, Patty, who is his caregiver, his main caregiver. And um, we went to go visit him, but Mike has been through an awful lot this past year. He's been in ICU quite a bit and they ended up having to do a trach on him um, so that he could breathe better. And I wasn't sure, you know, exactly how the visit would go because he's been through so much, but we went to go visit him yesterday. And from the moment we went there, we had an amazing conversation. Now, Mike can't speak verbally anymore. He's lost that. But he talks with his eyes on a computer screen. And it takes him time to type out, you know, a comment. We could be talking about something and he will type out his answer. But he also answers with his eyes. He'll, he'll do this for yes or he'll do this for no. So that when it's an easy yes or no answer. So we were talking quite a bit and we visited for a couple of hours with him. And the big joke with the Italians is we never know when to say goodbye because we start an hour and we, we're still there after an hour saying goodbye. But that's just the Italian way. And it was happening yesterday. We had a family reunion to go to. And so we were talking. And at one point, Harry's sitting there and he's doing this. And Mike types out with his eyes. Harry seems to be getting impatient. <laughs> And we all thought that was hilarious. And we shared some stories and Mike laughed and you could just see the smile on his face. And I just, we just had some awesome conversation. But at the end of that conversation, he said one more thing and he typed something out and the machine came on and it said, everyone will die. Not everyone will live. And I looked at him and I said, Mike, you're so right. And that's so profound. He had no idea what today's message was. But he said, everyone will die. Not everyone will live. And that is the heart of this message. The Holy Spirit wants people to know his son is coming back. Jesus is coming back. And we have an obligation to share that with people because the season to reap is here. We need to be sharing Jesus with people. Because you see, if they don't accept Jesus, the alternative is a life in hell. Because if we believe spiritually that there's a heaven, there is also a hell. And good is not good enough. We have to accept Jesus. We're not perfect. It's not about being good. It's not about what we do. It's not about works. It's not about what we don't do. We can never earn our salvation. It was given freely, and he's, his word says to give it freely. We received it freely. We give it freely. We share Jesus with those that God puts in our path. We pray for divine appointments for other people. We pray for divine appointments for our own family. If Christians would take the reins and do what we're called to do, we may see differences in our loved ones who are struggling with alcohol because maybe that relative will have a divine appointment with another believer. If everyone was just prepared for those divine appointments to share Jesus, even with one person, we may see such a difference with our loved ones that we're so concerned about. Jesus came back for everyone, not just a few. This morning, if those watching by internet, I know everyone here loves the Lord, but those watching by internet, if you're watching and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, don't let this day go by without accepting him as your Lord and Savior. It's as simple as saying, Father, forgive me. 
Forgive me for my sins. Help me to do what you're calling me to do. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. It's that simple. If you're sincere when you repent, he forgives. He forgives and he doesn't remember. Again, too, if you're a believer and maybe you've slipped away, it's as easy as turning back. See, God never leaves us. He never forsakes us. He doesn't turn away from us. We turn. He doesn't. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. His word never changes. His word never changes. I don't know if you remember the song, The King is Coming. Some of you that are seasoned believers, you remember the song, The King is Coming, The King is Coming. I just heard the trumpet sounding, and now his face I see. The King is Coming, The King is Coming. Praise God. He's coming for me. Can you say that this morning? He's coming for me. It's personal. He's coming for me. We can't save each other. It's personal. This morning, I would like to just open up the altars. If you want to come up here and spend time or even where you're sitting to spend time with Jesus Allow the Holy Spirit to do a work in and through us, to draw us first closer to him, to give us ears to hear his voice, to give us strength to walk on the path he's called us to walk on and do the work he's called us to do. He's here for his church this morning. And he loves everyone that's here. We know that. So this morning, let's just spend time before Jesus. And give him our hearts and our attention before we walk out of here.